Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn a great expression, so let's get started. Today we're learning this expression, through the ringer. Pronunciation, through. Use the voiceless TH sound, plus the R sound together, thir, through, through, through the ringer. Ringer, what is a ringer? This is a ringer. Before we had electric dryers, people used this to wring out their clothes. So that's why it's called a ringer. Remember the phrasal verb, ring out. Ring out is the phrasal verb. You ring out your clothes, you ring out a rag, you ring out a towel. And this is a ringer. So, through the ringer. What does it mean? It's like this. If you put a person through a ringer, of course you cannot put a person through a ringer, but that's the idea. If you put a person through a difficult experience, if you give someone a difficult experience, if you make somebody's experience very difficult, you put them through the ringer. So let's talk about the verbs. You can use different verbs like put, put somebody through the ringer. You can use been, He's been through the ringer. He has been. He has been through the ringer. Or I can use run. Run through the ringer. In passive voice, he was run through the ringer. It means he had a very difficult experience. Let's hear some examples of the expression through the ringer with different verbs. This could be it. I would also say you look like you've been through the ringer. Looks like your ball's been put through the ringer, Ari. What's up? Look, she's just taking your little chicken fried nuts and she's running them through the ringer, okay? She's just get Kate's been through the ringer, so if it's not going to make her any worse, I say uh, take the kid to the beach. I'm sorry for putting you through the ringer, even though you did deserve it sometimes. Example, his teacher was very strict and made his experience very difficult. So I can say the teacher put him through the ringer. He took the test once, but the teacher said he had to take the test again. And while he was taking the test, the teacher stood behind him the whole time, watching him over his shoulder. He made the experience very difficult. His teacher put him through the ringer. Let's practice. Did his teacher put him through the ringer? That's right. His teacher put him through the ringer. Gave him a really hard time. Made his experience very difficult. He definitely put him through the ringer. First, this is not correct. Escurir. Drain. I'm going to drain the towel. It's not correct to say drain the towel. We use the verb drain in a different way. She's not draining the towel. This is also not correct. You have to, um, the towel before hanging it. Ah, oh, I have to squeeze the towel. Squeeze, yeah. She's not squeezing the towel. She's doing something different. Let's talk about the difference. First, let's talk about squeeze. This is squeeze. But she's not squeezing the towel. She's doing this. This is different. You have to do this to remove the water. And that's the phrasal verb we're learning today. The phrasal verb is ring out. You need to ring out the towel to remove the water. Pronunciation. The W is silent, so we use the R sound, r -r ring. The ING makes the long E sound like green beans. So together, ring. And the NG makes the nasal sound. Mm -mm -mm. There's no G sound. It's not ring. Ring. I'm going to get it back if I have to ring out every one of you like a dish rag. Ring out. Not ring gout, but ring out. Link the sounds, mm, with the ow, ring ow, ring out, ring out. So I can say she needs to ring out the towel because it's wet. 
This is a separable phrasal verb. So if I use a pronoun like it, I have to put it in the middle. I have to say ring it out. I cannot say ring out it. I have to put it in the middle. And the pronunciation, ring it out. The T in it changes to a fast D because it's between vowels. Ring it out. Ring it out. So I can say, the towel is wet, so she needs to wring it out. Or I can say, she needs to wring out the towel. Let's practice. Does she need to wring out the towel? That's right, she needs to wring out the towel. The towel is wet. Does she need to wring it out? That's right, she needs to wring it out. Because it's wet. The phrasal verb in the present, ring out. In the past, rung out. We see the U making the short sound, like cup and up. Uh, uh. Relaxed sound. Uh, uh. R, rung, rung out. In the past, she rung out the towel, because it was wet. And if I use a pronoun, it, I have to put it in the middle. Rung it out. The towel was wet, so she rung it out. So in the past, I can say she wrung out the towel, or I can use a pronoun and say she wrung it out. Let's practice. Did she wring out the towel? That's right, she wrung out the towel. The towel was wet. Did she wring it out? That's right, she wrung it out. Or I can change the verb to the continuous form and say wringing. Right now, in the moment, she's wringing out the towel. Or if I use the pronoun it, she's wringing it out. She's wringing it out. The towel is wet, so right now, she's wringing it out. Let's practice. Is she wringing out the towel? That's right, she's wringing out the towel. The towel is wet. Is she wringing it out? That's right, she's wringing it out right now. So remember, this is squeeze, and this is ring out. So let's talk about squeeze. How do we use the verb squeeze? Example, you can squeeze oranges to make orange juice. If you like fresh squeezed orange juice. You can squeeze the orange, or oranges, you need more than one. You can squeeze the oranges to make orange juice. Let's practice. Can you squeeze oranges to make orange juice? That's right, you can squeeze oranges to make orange juice. Or, if you want lemonade, you can squeeze lemons to make lemonade. If you want fresh squeezed lemonade. Let's practice. Can you squeeze lemons to make lemonade? That's right, you can squeeze lemons to make lemonade. Or you can squeeze somebody's hand. Maybe if you're scared. Example, the girl was scared, so she squeezed her mother's hand. Squeeze in the present, in the past, squeezed. She squeezed her mother's hand because she was scared. Let's practice. Why did she squeeze her mother's hand? That's right, she squeezed her mother's hand because she was scared. What else can you squeeze? Maybe this. This is a squeaky toy. And you give this to your dog. And when you squeeze it, or when the dog squeezes it, usually the dog bites it. That's how he squeezes it. And when you squeeze the squeaky toy, it makes a squeak. It makes that sound. That's why it's called a squeaky toy. But the verb is squeeze. You squeeze the squeaky toy. Another example, this is a stress ball, and you squeeze the stress ball to relieve your stress, to get rid of your stress, to relieve your stress. You squeeze the stress ball. Example, he's squeezing a stress ball because he wants to relieve his stress. Let's practice. Is he squeezing a stress ball? That's right, he's squeezing a stress ball. Now let's talk about drain. You cannot drain a towel, you wring out a towel. So how do we use the word drain? Well, you can drain pasta, 
You're removing the water. You drain pasta. I need to drain the pasta. <laughs> Example. She's draining the pasta. After you cook the pasta in water, you need to drain the pasta. And she's draining the pasta. Let's practice. Is she draining the pasta? That's right. She's draining the pasta. Pronunciation. We see dr together. It makes the j j sound like jump and juice. J j plus the r, j drain. Other things you can drain. You can drain containers, like a sink. They need to drain the sink. The sink is full of water, so they need to drain the sink. Let's practice. Do they need to drain the sink? That's right. They need to drain the sink. Or a bathtub. They need to drain the bathtub. But we don't have to say bath. We can just say tub. They need to drain the tub. Or they need to drain the bathtub. The tub is full of water, and they're done taking a bath, so they need to drain the tub. Let's practice. Do they need to drain the bathtub? That's right. They need to drain the bathtub. Or maybe a pool. The pool is very dirty, so they need to drain the swimming pool. They need to drain the pool. They need to remove all the water. You got to drain the pool. Now we'll have to drain the pool. Excuse me, sir, Mr. Gatsby. I'm going to drain the pool today before the leaves start falling in. Mr. Gannon, will you drain the pool? We'll have to drain the pool. Let's practice. Do they need to drain the pool? That's right. They need to drain the pool. Why? Why do they need to drain the pool? That's right. They need to drain the pool because the water is dirty. Or you can drain a battery. Imagine you leave the lights on in your car. Well, that will drain the battery. It will take all the energy away. We use the verb drain in this case also. If you leave your lights on. It will drain the battery. You have to turn the lights off after you stop your car. So if you leave your lights on, it will drain the battery. My car broke down, and I didn't want to drain the battery and run the engine. And something's wrong with the transmission, I think. So let's practice. If you leave your lights on, will it drain the battery? That's right. If you leave your lights on. It will drain the battery. Don't do that. Or you can drain your bank account. If you take all the money out of your bank account, we use the verb drain. You drain your bank account. Example: They bought a house and it cost a lot of money, and it took all the money out of their bank account. So I can say, it drained their bank account. They bought a house and it drained their bank account. Drain in the present. In the past, drained, drained. It drained their bank account. Let's practice. They bought a house. Did it drain their bank account? That's right. They bought a house and it drained their bank account. And we have another phrasal verb: drain off. We use drain off when you talk about removing oil. Usually, you use a paper towel when you fry food. You cook food in oil, and when you remove the food, you put it on a paper towel, and you drain off the oil. You drain off the excess oil, or the extra oil. When it's too much, we use excess. You drain off the excess oil. You don't want too much oil on your food, so you drain it off on a paper towel. When you fry food in oil, do you need to drain off the excess oil? That's right. You need to drain off the excess oil, or I can use the pronoun it. You need to drain it off. When you remove the food from the oil, you need to drain it off. So remember, this is the phrasal verb wring out. She's wringing out the towel, and this is squeeze. He's squeezing the ball, and this is drain. They're draining the sink. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.